Coming up today, Audi want to connect your EV to your house, VW reveal details of their Pikes Peak racer, and GM confirm increased production for the Chevrolet Bolt. Well, hello and welcome to the Thursday, the 14th of June edition of EV News Daily. My name is Martin Lee, and I'm here with all the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Well, firstly, this is show 150, so thank you very much to any long-time listeners, and welcome if this is the first time you've listened to the podcast today. It is good to have you listening, wherever you are around the world. Back at show 100, 50 shows ago, I changed the format very slightly, mainly in the area of how we title it for the various platforms, actually, so that it looked good in whatever car you were driving if you listened to this instead of the radio. Uh, A few minor changes from show 150 going forwards. A few tweaks. The main thing is uh, we want to involve more of your comments from the community. You'll still still hear all of today's biggest news stories, but I'll be including at least one and maybe more after the news piece of feedback from the socials or YouTube or email comments that I've been receiving. That way, if you just want the news, you know you can always stop there, but I hope you'll stick around to hear from the community, from other listeners, from other enthusiasts, from other people interested in EVs. I would be delighted as well if you wanted to contribute to the show too. In the long term, yes, more interviews, plans for those as well as already started to do, more specials, and yes to the YouTubers who have been asking. Uh, Plans are in place to try and get it visualised, maybe even once a week as a roundup as well. Well, starting with the news then, and following yesterday's story about Porsche releasing an app to manage charging across multiple providers, today, Audi just revealed how they want to integrate your EV into your house. Audi's teaming up with two new partners to connect its electric e-tron models with your home energy management system. And with systems from SMA Solar and the Hager Group, to enable the most cost-effective way to charge your EV. And we know that electric cars already have a much lower total cost of ownership. Well, the head of product marketing at Audi kicks us off with some first-class marketing guff. Uh, We have lots of this kind of stuff lying around at work. That marketing departments say stuff like this. In keeping with our premium quality standards, we want an electric car that fits seamlessly into the intelligently connected home to provide genuine added value for the customer. That's why we've teamed up with two leading suppliers of the home energy management systems that bring maximum charging convenience, end quote. Well, back to uh, everyday language with the connect charging system and a suitably equipped home energy management system, uh, you can use the variable electricity tariffs, which are cropping up all over the world now, to charge your Audi e-tron. The system will charge the battery when the electricity is less expensive, whilst simultaneously considering the individual needs of how you use your car, like the departure time in the morning and the charge level that you like it charged to, Uh, This is sounding a lot like Elon Musk talked about, actually, at the shareholder meeting, where he wants the app to be like almost like a butler service, so it knows how far you go on your commute Monday to Friday, how much your car's got to be charged up to, how warm or cool you like it. Well, back to the Audi system, the Connect charging system uh, gets all of the necessary information from your home energy management system, or you can enter it yourself in the portal, which is called My Audi. Now, if your home also has some solar panels as well, some PV, the uh, customer can optimise, says Audi, the charging process. And you can divert that excess solar energy into your Audi e-tron using this new package from Audi. And that sounds very much like some of the products on the market, like the Zappi, which is enormously popular here in the UK. So you can use your excess solar they've really pioneered that by the way and done a great job of getting into people's heads that you can do that and (laughs) audi have come along and used that technology by the look of it to do their own version of it Uh, although their version also connects with i don't know if zappy does this but the forecast the weather forecast and the hours of daylight where you are and the time of year how many daylight hours you've got and the current needs of the your home energy Uh, to know whether to put it either into a battery or into your car if it is excess, if it thinks there's enough sun per day. Well, from Audi to the owner's VW, and less than two weeks away from the Pikes Peak Challenge, and VW have told us more about their custom-designed racer. It features two interlinked lithium-ion battery blocks on board located to the right and the left of the cockpit. Now they feed energy to two separate high performance motors 
at the front and the rear axles. Together, providing 500 kilowatts of power. This is all according to Green Car Congress, who say the ID Peaks Pike itself produces up to 20% of the electrical energy which is going to be needed for the challenge on the 12.42 mile or 20 kilometer challenge via the regen braking. It also contributes part of the brake performance as well. Uh, mentioned before on the podcast, I love Formula E, but I love Formula One as well. I think there's a place for for combustion engines going forward in 10, 15 years time in certain situations and maybe because it's got a lot of energy density maybe we just burn fuel for a bit of racing or maybe we have classic cars that aren't converted to evs that you run a couple of times a year at car shows so preserving where cars came from it's you know you haven't got to ban all the fuel as long as we get like 99.99 percent there Well, in Formula One, they do a similar thing, and they use that braking, that regen for braking. It's an integral part of the system, and it sounds like the VW have learned from that and using the same system in their Pikes Peak Challenger. They say we're breaking new ground with the ID Pikes Peak. Uh, This is the first time that VW is uh, competing in a race with a full EV. Alongside the elaborate aerodynamic concepts and the special requirements of the chassis, the development of the electric drivetrain, they say was their greatest challenge. Well, on to Volvo now, and it's still a whole year before you can get your grubby little mitts on the Polestar 1, the plug-in hybrid with 600 horsepower uh, from uh, an engine and that big battery, that 100-mile pure EV range. But before then, Volvo aren't too scared of leveraging all of that uh, Polestar name, the halo effect, if you like, of Polestar. Now, it just unveiled the Polestar engineered flavour of some of its cars which you'll be able to buy the upcoming s60 hybrid sports sedan uh, will also offer the option of polestar engineering on its v60 estate and the xc60 suv next year it says n gadget now you're looking at upgrades to things like the power the torque the software and brakes as well special calipers and aesthetic upgrades special colored calipers and exhausts all polestar engineered volvos are t8 models so they've got twin electric and hybrid electric motors in them uh, with the gas engine the xc60 for one has an electric only range of about 18 miles on a good day uh, good enough for mooching around town do a bit of shopping stuff like that the bmw 3 series is going to be fighting against an all-new s60 engineered by polestar and I think, it's, I think it's exactly a week away now. The last update I had was the unveiling was going to be at Charleston, South Carolina factory. And that sounds like Volvo just making um, more of an extreme version of their cars. A bit like the M-Series BMWs, uh, I guess you could say, or, or the AMGs that you can buy, Mercedes. Well, General Motors released its annual sustainability reports yesterday, and the automaker reaffirmed its commitment to building even more Chevrolet Bolt EVs this year. Reports Sean at GM Authority, the automaker, said that in response to global demand, production's going to increase at the Orion plant in the fourth quarter of 2018. North America should see a greater supply of Bolt EVs late this year, but GM will ship some of the additional cars down to South Korea to fill demand as well. Additionally, uh, GM also reconfirmed what we told you about before, but this is good reconfirmation, 20 20 new electric cars by 2023. That's for all global markets, though. Now, the latter portion of the commitment likely means the US won't see all of those 20 cars in the pipeline, uh, but we do know, uh, says GM Authority, that quite a few of the planned cars are going to be Cadillacs. According to the previous comments, GM said there will be at least 20 new Full BEVs, which means we could see even more of them turning up in China. I think that's um, a pretty good case could be made for that. We're talking about China, actually, and staying in China. Last week, Geely, those of Volvo-owning fame, uh, launched their Geely M Grand GSE. It's one of their combustion cars, but they have simply taken out the engine and plonked in some electric. This is not one of those designed-from-the-ground-up moments. 
This is simply swapping out the technology. Starts at, I'd say, around 19,000 US dollars after all the different incentives are taken into account and goes up to 22,000 dollars. There's a 120 kilowatt motor and the range, they say, is 217 miles. No word on the size of the battery. At 217 miles, it would be sizable, so maybe that is an optimistic mileage estimate. If it was more like 150, say, then probably a 40 kilowatt hour battery seems a pretty common and cost effective battery to put in that kind of car. Very similar front end, looking at these pictures to the Hyundai Kona, you know, where the grill is all closed off. I mean, why would you have holes in it? It just reduces the aero. And actually the size of it, the, the width, the height, the length, all very similar to the, uh, the Kona, that typical small SUV market. Uh, now, what I like about the Geely cars, the electric Geely cars in China, they also have the ability to become a power source for other EVs or electrical equipment. I think you can pop the, uh, the boot, or the trunk, as you would call it, if you're listening to it in America, and uh, you know you're going out, you're doing some uh, some work in a remote location. I think you can plug your tools in and get a good amount of power out of it. Well, moving on, and Reuters say that Toyota is taking the unprecedented route in order to meet China's stringent green car quotas, which. All Western manufacturers are going to do. It uh, doesn't have to just be uh, Japanese makers like Toyota. It's going to be everyone. They're going to have to hit certain quotas of selling green cars or new energy vehicles, as the Chinese call them. Toyota showrooms will be selling an electric vehicle without their own logo on. Instead, it's going to feature the GAC logo. Now, GAC Motor, Toyota's Chinese partner, and it's well, those cars are going to be built around GAC's low-cost technology, going to be built in China, but sold in Toyota showrooms and sold by Toyota, which gives them access to the Japanese market, but also means they get to meet Beijing's requirements to sell enough of these new energy vehicles. Uh, got to be 10% of your production in 2019, and that's how they'll get round it. Or they'll achieve it. That didn't mean to say get round. Well, finally... Occasionally, I like to look at what those kind of mainstream motoring websites are saying about EVs. We know that the, the really big EV blogs out there and the great uh, YouTube channels as well do an amazing job of actually give a really balanced argument. Uh, they're not just cheerleaders for EVs. But what about the mainstream sites? Well, I find, I find there's a pattern. They're normally pretty complimentary, and then they lapse into some lazy conclusions about a lack of chargers and say, you can't do long journeys. They're not ready yet. Well, the drive has a review of the i3s by bmw and they were impressed here are a, a few quotes if you want to read the whole thing highly recommend the article the electric motor they say had plenty of pep left even when accelerating at 55 miles an hour though it definitely felt more comfortable on city streets the infotainment and instrument panel screens kind of look tiny and out of date they say the regen braking very impressive on the bmw i3s one pedal driving is easy I actually often wound up taking my foot off the accelerator and finding myself stopping way more quickly than expected thanks to regen, then awkwardly creeping up to the spotlight, uh, stoplight at five miles an hour. And uh, just to break away from the article, I would say I had the, exactly the same thing when I drove my brother's. He's got an i3 Rex, and we put it in Eco Pro Plus mode, and the very first time I drove that, and uh, it was my first experience in the BMW of how, they, of how the i3 does regen, and I was off the accelerator way too early as well, just <laughs> came to a stop in the middle of the road way too early before the junction. Well, back to this article, and the battery, they say, is good for 120 miles when fully charged. Uh, the teeny tiny tank, they call it. The teeny tiny tank for the teeny tiny range extender will give you 60 miles. Maybe a bit more if you babied it. Realistically, they say you could do 180, maybe 200 miles, uh, and then have to stop every 50 miles to refill your gas tank. Well, that's where the news ends this week. Moving on to some of the community comments, actually, and some of our listener comments. Firstly, hi to Jeff Borden. Now, Jeff Borden listens in North Vancouver, British Columbia, and he tweeted uh, earlier uh, yesterday, actually, and he said this, Vancouver Model 3's getting ready. Thank you, Elon Musk. And he put it with a video of him driving past eight really long rows of brand new Teslas waiting to meet their owners. It was outdoors, and it looked like a lot, I mean a lot, of Model 3s in this massive outdoor parking lot. Um, yep, yeah, I saw a couple of S's and uh, two X's, I thought, but nearly all 3s. 
He followed it up on Twitter and sent us a panorama photo of them all and then some shots of Tesla's temporary showroom. And in the photo he sent, I could count about 55, 50 or 55 cars. Again, nearly all Model 3s. Uh, this is the in- inside showroom. Well, Jeff said that he'd been talking to Tesla staff and he said in a follow-up tweet, staff indicated 700-plus Model 3s in Vancouver and 1,000-plus in Toronto in a two-week period. Thank you, Jeff. Great comment. Keep the pictures coming. Love to see uh, how those deliveries are coming along. Hi to Walter. And Walter McVeigh said to me yesterday, after yesterday's podcast, we're talking about having some sympathy for the Tesla employees who are being laid off. It's a thing that can't happen in this country, in the UK. You can't just go into work and... Uh, be told that you are having your last day, your last week. Uh, And I don't work in a unionised industry, by the way, but employment laws, uh, thanks to European employment laws, mean that if your boss wants to get rid of you, you've either got to be really bad at your job or uh, your position gets made redundant, in which case they can't replace you because they're not getting rid of you. They're getting rid of the position and they can't get a new person to do your work for you. So then they, they have to prove that your work isn't being done or was split up amongst other people. Really hard to get rid of people uh, who are doing a good job in this country. And I was saying so yesterday on the podcast, I was really surprised at how you can go to work and get told today was your last day. And Walter replied, if you think that's crazy, look at the US uh, maternity and paternity leave. Um, 12 weeks unpaid minimum and straight back to work. Thank you, Walter. Yeah, we've, we're really quite spoiled here, aren't we? Because uh, my wife, for instance, would get a year off work paid. Six months, I think, full pay, and then six months on half pay. Yeah, we know we've got it good here. And finally, hi to Liz. And this is perhaps the most important thing I'll talk about on today's podcast, and I'm glad you're still listening right now. Liz Leverage. Uh, she got in contact with me yesterday because she wanted to send me a message about her husband, Jason. Now, her husband, Jason, is terminally ill and he wants to make some experiences before he goes. Husband, Jason, says Liz, is planning on setting a land speed record in an electric wheelchair. He's going to have to exceed 55 miles an hour. That's 90 kilometers an hour. But he wants to do 100 miles an hour in a wheelchair. Uh, Now, Liz says we were at Fully Charged Live over the weekend, had some great support from Robert Llewellyn and the EV community, and got his pictures taken with Robert, really made his day, and really gave some momentum uh, to his campaign. Uh, He, Jason, she says, my husband Jason, was the first person to uh, go up Mount Snowden in an electric all-terrain wheelchair to the summit, and he abseiled off the Humber Bridge, big bridge here in the UK. Uh, you may have seen us on BBC One's DIY SOS. Uh, you can find out more about Jason on his website. Now, Jason has motor neurone disease, and if you know about that, you'll know that Jason is filling every possible moment he can with incredible memories. His website is makingmemories.life. That's makingmemories.life. He says the rules are simple. Treat each day as if it were your last Live, love, and laugh. Above all else, take every opportunity, every minute you can, and make memories. So Jason's looking for backers and sponsors. If you're listening to this, and it's the kind of thing that your company would sponsor, that would back you, would help him build this electric wheelchair to make his memories, you know how to get in contact with him. Well, can you help spread the word about electric cars? If you can, please share this with somebody who might be interested. If you want to listen to previous episodes, they're all on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, and the blog which is evnewsdaily.com. If you subscribe, you get them first and free and automatically. And if you could leave me a little review on your favoured platform, it really helps out. Uh, Come and say hi on the socials by searching for EV News Daily. You can email hello at evnewsdaily.com. That's hello at evnewsdaily.com. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.